Let's talk about the teacher's pension. This, of course, is the retirement fund for those amazing individuals that dedicate their work to educating the country's youngsters in the best possible environment. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Badness, helping you be better with your money. So who is eligible? If you are an individual who's employed by a participating employer and you are in a predominantly teaching role and you're between the ages of 16 to 75, then it is very likely that you are eligible to enroll in the teacher's pension. Like with all other workplace pensions, as soon as you start your teaching role, your employer will automatically enroll you in the teacher's pension scheme. You do have the option to opt out if you choose. However, I would encourage you to think seriously about this before making a final decision. We all want to retire at some point in our lives by putting our feet up. So you need to think about how you're going to fund those years when you're not working. For most of us, we will be getting our money from the workplace pension. So if it's not gonna be for you, where is that money gonna come from? That's why I would always encourage you to do as much of your research as possible, or even seek professional advice before making such a serious decision. Having said that, if you do decide to opt out, you can also choose to opt back in at any point in time as well. The teacher's pension scheme is a defined benefits pension scheme, which means that it offers teachers a guaranteed income for life when they retire. Now, major changes were made to the pension scheme back in April 2015. That means there are different versions currently in play. So depending on when you join the scheme will depend on how much money you can take out and when you can take that money out as well. One of the major changes that was actually introduced was that it saw that the teacher's pension moved from a final salary pension, which means that your pensionable income was generally determined by your last few years of service, and it moved towards a career average earnings type of pension, which means that your pensionable income will be determined on your average salary throughout your working career. Now, not all members from the old scheme would have been transferred to the career average pension scheme, um, but the final salary type of pension is going to be phased out and it is due to be fully phased out in April 2022. So the only type of pension that we'll have post this date will be the career average one. Now, this also means that it is possible for one individual to have a pension in the old final salary setup and also have another pension with the new career average scheme. But you'll only ever be contributing one at any given time. Now let's look at the different scheme and member types that are currently in play. The first one being is that you are a protected scheme member, which means that you'll always be on the old final salary scheme. Now this will only be applicable to you if you were an active member in the pension scheme before April 2012, and you are 10 years or less away from your normal pension age on that date. I will explain what normal pension ages are a little bit later on in this video. This means that you will always be on the old final salary scheme until you retire, unless you have a break in your service of more than five years. Now the second type is the tapered scheme member. Now this means you are on the old final salary scheme. However, you will eventually move to the new career average arrangement. Now this will only be applicable to you if you were an active member before April 2012, and you have more than 10 years, but less than 13 and a half years away from your normal pension age. Now you will move to the new pension scheme on what is called the transition date. And this date will be based on what your age was at the time of April 2012. Now I will put a link in the description box down below if you want to look at the full list of ages and their associated transition dates. Um, but eventually everyone will be moving on to the new scheme by February 2022. The third type are transition scheme members. This means that you were on the final salary scheme, but you were immediately moved on to the career average scheme on the 1st of April, 2015. This would have happened to you if you were more than 13 and a half years away from your normal pension age on the 1st of April, 2012. And lastly, we have the new scheme members. Now these are individuals that join the pension scheme on or after the 1st of April, 2015. And that means they would have automatically enrolled in the career average arrangement. So how much will you be contributing to the scheme? Now, both full-time and part-time employees will be contributing a percentage of their gross salary into their pension pot every month. Now, how much that percentage is, 
is based on what your salary is. Now, I'll put a list here of the full salary and percentage brackets for this tax year, but they are revised yearly, so I would encourage you to check online and find out what the latest contribution rates are uh, for that given date. But your employer should be notifying you every time there is a change. So as you can see here, if you're getting a salary up to 28,310, you'll be contributing 7.4% of your monthly salary to your pension. If you are earning above 81,662, this will go up to 11.7%. Now at first glance, when you do look at the contribution rate, it might actually seem like a lot. However, please do remember that you do get government tax relief every time that you contribute towards your pension. And what this means is that for any contributions that you make, those contributions should not be subject to any tax whatsoever. Now, I will demonstrate this with a simple example. Let's say I earned £1,500 per month and I contributed absolutely nothing to my pension. I'll be charged 20% at the income tax rate. Uh, that means £300 goes to the tax person and I am left with £1,200 in my take home pay. Now let's say in the next month I actually decide to enrol in the pension scheme and based on my salary I would be contributing 7.4% to my pension pot every month. So from my £1,500 per month that means £111 goes to my pension pot, that's 7.4%. And the tax will be made on the remaining balance which would be 1500 minus that £111. So now the taxable income will now be £1,389. And again, I will be charged 20% on income tax. So that leaves me with a take home pay of £1,111.20. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here with these two examples is that even though I contributed an extra £111 in my teacher's pension scheme, I only lost £88.80 in my take home pay. And that is all because of the government tax relief I receive every time I contribute to my pension. So if we look back at the contribution rates, which ranged from 7.4% to 11.7%, in actual real terms, it's actually gonna be a lot less than that because of that government tax relief. Now, I do want to mention that the way the tax relief actually works isn't exactly how I demonstrated it in my example, but I don't want to worry you with those small details, but the fundamentals of how this tax relief system is supposed to work is exactly what I just explained. So how much does your employer contribute? Now your employer actually also contributes to the pension scheme and that is at a rate of 23.6%. Now again, at first glance, this might actually seem like a really good rate as it significantly beats the employer's contribution rates on most other sectors in the market. However, because the teacher's pension is run as a defined benefit scheme compared to most other uh, pension schemes on the private market which run on a defined contribution scheme you don't actually see the direct benefits of your employers contributions when they do make their contribution now what I mean by that is if I was an individual on a defined contribution scheme which means that my contributions as well as my employers contributions go directly into a pension pot with my specific name on it and that pension pot is then invested in the stock market and then whatever is left is my retirement savings and I have to deduce how I'm going to split that saving uh, across my years of living. Now defined benefit scheme actually work quite differently as there's no specific pension pot with your name on it. The way I like to think of defined benefit schemes is this huge sort of pension machine which on one end is collecting money from the employees that are currently working and the employer's contributions and on the other end it is giving out that money to the current retirees from that pension scheme. So when it comes to your turn to retire, the money that you'll receive isn't the money that you specifically contributed. It will be money that is going to be collected from the active members and the employer at that point in time that are currently contributing to the scheme as well. And the amount of money that you can actually claim from this pension machine will be determined on your final salary or your career average earnings, but we'll touch on that a little bit later on. So when can you actually access your pension? Now the age at which you can do this is what is called the normal pension age. And this normal pension age does differ depending on what your arrangement is. So if you are a protected member, that means you'll have a normal pension age of either 60 or 65. 
So if you were in service before the 1st of January 2007 and have not had a break in service for more than five years, your pension age will be 60, otherwise it's going to be 65. Now, if you are a tapered or transition member, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So depending on when you retire, it's likely that you'll have access to both your final salary and a career average arrangement. So for the final salary aspect, it will be exactly like it is with the protected member. So it'll either be 60 or 65. But for the career average pension, this will either be 65 or the state pension age, which currently ranges between 66 and 68 and the latest date will be chosen. So if your state pension age is older than 65, uh, the state pension age is when your normal pension age will be. Now, if you are a new member, your normal pension age will either be 65 or the state pension age, again, whichever is later. Now you can actually choose to get access to your pension earlier than the normal pension age, and the earliest age that you can actually do this is 55. However, if you decide to retire before your normal pension age, your benefits will be penalized and your pensionable income will be reduced as a result. But how much it will be reduced will depend on when you decide to retire and how far you are from your normal pension age. Now there is one catch that I do need to explain and this will only be applicable to those that are tapered and transition members or if you do find yourself in a position where you have access to both the old final salary pension as well as a new career average scheme pension. Now with this catch, and it is rather a really stupid catch in my opinion, but it is a rule nonetheless, um, because you do have access to both uh, pension types, you'll have different normal pension ages. It's likely for the final salary, it'll either be 60 uh, or 65, and with the career average, it'll either be 65 or the state pension age, which will be between 60 to 68 currently. However, even though you do have different normal pension ages for both schemes, you can only claim on your pension at the same time. So what this means is that you actually have two options available to you. So the first one being is that um, you can take the earliest normal pension age that is available to you. So let's say that's 60 years old, for example, for the final salary scheme. And then you'll have to take a penalized, reduced amount from your career average scheme uh, as a factor of this. And this is also assuming that you are no longer in employment. Alternatively, you may want to decide to reach your final normal pension age, which will be the state pension, for example, on the career average scheme, and then claim on both without taking any penalty. Again, I think this is really, really unfair, particularly if these schemes are considered separate. Um, I just don't think it's really appropriate to penalize one when you are eligible to claim for the other. But again, uh, I don't make the rules here. I'm just wanting to let you know uh, that you should be aware of this catch. So how much can you claim from your teacher's pension scheme? Now, I will be going through an example just to better hammer home how this works, um, but I will be focusing on the career average arrangement just because the final salary is due to be phased out fairly shortly. Um, but I will provide an illustrative example towards the end of the video um, if you are interested. So for the career average arrangement, the amount that is contributed towards your pension benefits is based on your pensionable earnings or your salary for that year. So every year you are an active member, one fifty-seventh of your pensionable earnings plus any overtime will be contributed towards your pension. And the amount in your pension benefits will be revalued through a process called indexation. And this means your pot is revalued to keep in line with inflation. So every contribution that you do make throughout your career will be added and summed up at the very end once you hit retirement and the amount that is in your benefits at the very end will be the guaranteed income that you will receive for life. Now I am going to jump into an example to better explain this as I can imagine some of these numbers sound a bit confusing um, but I have made some assumptions in my example. So the first one being is, so the salary starts at £20,000 per year and then I've increased this by 10% every two years. Um, now, this is probably not going to be an accurate reflection of what it is in real life, but generally speaking, an individual is likely to see their salary increase as they progress further and further into their working career. That is why I've put this fixed assumption in this example, just to add a bit of realism, but it's not totally real. I have also assumed that inflation is fixed at 2% every year. That means the indexation process will be at 2%. Cool, so now looking at the spreadsheet, you can see that our salary in year one 
is at £20,000 and inflation for that year is 2%. We have a starting value of obviously £0 because we've yet to contribute to our pension, but by the end of year one, we would have added 1 57th of our gross salary into our pension benefits. So this comes to a total of £350.88. The pension is also then re-evaluated to keep in line with inflation, which in this example is at 2%. So this adds another £7.02 to our pension benefit. So by the end of year one, we are entitled to £357.89. Now what this means is if I was to retire there and now, by the end of year one, I would receive £357.89 as an annual income for life. Moving on to year two, so my salary still stays the same at £20,000 and we add another 1 57th of our gross salary to our pension pot. So this becomes £708.77. This is then re-evalued, adding another £14.18 to our entitlement. So by the end of year two, we have £722.95. So again, if I was to retire here and now, I would be receiving this number for life. Now, let's just fast forward to year 25. Again, remember, I am increasing the salary by 10% every two years. So that means by year 25, we have a salary of £51,874. And you can see in our pension entitlement, we will receive £19,486.07, which is actually really, really good considering that you will be receiving this as a pensionable annual income for life. Cool, so hopefully that has given you some insight on how the pension benefits work for the teacher's pension scheme. And uh, this again is specific to the career average scheme. Um, but if you are interested in the final salary version, please pause the video now and I will demonstrate an example. So to wrap up, I just wanted to highlight a few benefits of the teacher's pension scheme. The first one being is that you do get a guaranteed income for life, which is actually very hard to find on the market. Defined benefit schemes are more common in the public sector. In the private sector, they tend to run on a defined contribution scheme, which doesn't have that guaranteed income for life benefit with it. So this is a really strong positive for the scheme. Another benefit is that you are also able to take out up to 25% of your pension as a tax-free lump sum. Uh, this will obviously impact your annual pension benefits if you do so, but it is good if you do want to get some access to a large chunk of cash once you do hit retirement, and it is of course tax-free. Another benefit is that you do get grants paid out to your family if you do die within service. I know this is a bit of a morbid benefit, but it is a benefit nonetheless. In the unfortunate circumstance of you passing away whilst you're in service, uh, your spouse, civil partner, your qualifying partner, or your nominated beneficiary will receive a death grant from this scheme, as well as receiving a payout from your pension two years after your passing. And the last benefit on this is that there is no reliance on the stock market, unlike with the defined contribution scheme. With defined benefits, you know exactly how much money you're going to get, and you can actually plan for it as well, which can be really, really helpful, especially if you are someone that isn't so comfortable with having a large portion of your retirement savings left in the stock market. With the defined benefit scheme, you know exactly how much money you will get when you retire. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Please do let me know in the comment section down below if you found this video incredibly useful. Of course, if you do have any further questions, please do drop them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you did find this video useful, I would really appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel. And remember, I release videos every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button too. See you later. Bye.